The Lancaster House Agreement, signed on 21 December 1979, declared a ceasefire, ending the Rhodesian Bush War, and directly led to the creation and recognition of the Republic of Zimbabwe. It required the imposition of direct British rule, nullifying Rhodesia's 1965 unilateral declaration of independence. British control would be strictly proscribed to the duration of a proposed election period, after which independence would follow. Crucially, the political wings of the nationalist terror groups ZANU and ZAPU, who had been waging the escalating, and increasingly costly insurgency, would be permitted to stand candidates in the forthcoming elections. This was however conditional to compliance with the ceasefire and the verified absence of voter intimidation. The agreement would lead to the dissolution of the unrecognized state of Zimbabwe-Rhodesia, created months earlier by the internal settlement, an agreement forged between moderate black nationalists and Ian Smith's government. While Zimbabwe-Rhodesia remained unrecognized, the internal settlement enfranchised the majority of blacks hitherto the key British demand and resulted in the election of the country's first black prime minister. Lancaster House covered the independence constitution, pre-independence arrangements and the terms of ceasefire. The agreement is named after Lancaster House in London, where the parties interested to the settlement attended the Conference on Independence from 10 September to 15 December 1979. The parties represented during the conference were, the British government, the Patriotic Front led by Robert Mugabe and Joshua Nkomo, ZAPU Zimbabwe African People's Union and ZANU Zimbabwe African National Union and the Zimbabwe Rhodesia government, represented by Prime Minister, Bishop Abel Muzoriwa and Minister Without Portfolio, Ian Smith. Negotiations <inaudible> 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 Following the meeting of Commonwealth heads of government held in Lusaka from 1–7 August 1979, the British government invited Muzoriwa and the leaders of the Patriotic Front to participate in a constitutional conference at Lancaster House. The purpose of the conference was to discuss and reach agreement on the terms of an independence constitution, to agree on the holding of elections under British authority, and to enable Zimbabwe Rhodesia to proceed to lawful and internationally recognised independence, with the parties settling their differences by political means. Lord Carrington, Foreign and Commonwealth Secretary of the United Kingdom, chaired the conference. The conference took place from 10 September to 15 December 1979 with 47 plenary sessions. In the course of its proceedings the conference reached agreement on the following issues. An outline of the independence constitution. Arrangements for the pre-independence period. A ceasefire agreement signed by all the parties. In concluding this agreement and signing its report, the parties undertook to accept the authority of the governor to abide by the independence constitution to comply with the pre-independence arrangements to abide by the ceasefire agreement to campaign peacefully and without intimidation to renounce the use of force for political ends to accept the outcome of the elections and to instruct any forces under their authority to do the same under the independence constitution agreed 20% of the seats in the country's parliament were to be reserved for whites this provision remained in the constitution until 1987. The agreement is signed on the 21st of December 1979. Lord Carrington and Sir Ian Gilmore signed the agreement on behalf of the United Kingdom. Bishop Abel Muzoriwa and Dr Silas Mundawarara signed for the government of Zimbabwe Rhodesia and Robert Mugabe and Joshua Nkomo for the Patriotic Front. Topic: Outcome Under the terms of the agreement, Zimbabwe Rhodesia temporarily reverted to its former status as the colony of southern Rhodesia, thereby ending the rebellion caused by Rhodesia's unilateral declaration of independence. Lord Christopher Soames was appointed governor with full executive and legislative powers. In terms of the ceasefire, ZAPU and ZANU guerrillas were to gather at designated assembly points under British supervision, following which elections were to be held to elect a new government. These elections were held in February 1980 and were won by the Zimbabwe African National Union – Patriotic Front ZANU -PF, led by Robert Mugabe. Independence in terms of the constitution agreed to at Lancaster House was granted to Zimbabwe on 18 April 1980 with Robert Mugabe as the first Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Land reform 
In addition to the terms cited above, Robert Mugabe and his supporters were pressured into agreeing to wait ten years before instituting land reform. The three month long conference almost failed to reach an accord due to disagreements on land reform. Mugabe was pressured to sign, and land was the key stumbling block. Both the British and American governments offered to compensate white citizens for any land sold so as to aid reconciliation the willing buyer, willing seller principle, and a fund was established to operate from 1980 to 1990. Topic. British delegation Peter Carrington, 6th Baron Carrington Chairman. Sir Ian Gilmore Sir Michael Havers David Ormsby Gore, 5th Baron Harleck Richard Luce Sir Michael Palliser Sir Anthony Duff D. M. Day R. A. C. Byatt Robin Renwick, Baron Renwick of Clifton P. R. N. Fifoot Sir Nicholas Fenn, Head of News Department of the Foreign Office George Walden C. D. Powell P. J. Barlow R. D. Wilkinson A. M. Layden R. M. J. Line M. J. Richardson C. R. L. de Chassiron a. J. Phillips M. C. Wood Topic. Patriotic Front Delegation Robert Mugabe, ZANU PF leader and future president of Zimbabwe Joshua Nkomo, PF ZAPU leader Josiah Mushor Chinamano, ZAPU leader, moderate, detained with Nkomo, future government minister Edgar Tekeri, future government minister, expelled from the party in 1988 after he denounced plans to establish a one-party state in Zimbabwe. He also emerged as a vocal critic of the massacre of civilians in Matabeliland after government launched a crackdown against so-called dissidents in the region. He formed his own party, Zimbabwe Unity Movement in 1989 ahead of general elections in 1990. General Josiah Tongogara, ZANLA General, from ZANU Militant External Wing Ernest R. Kadungor, ZAPU, Future Finance Secretary Dr. H. Ushuakuns, First Health Minister, Director of Energy and Transportation, Director of Political Affairs. Flamboyant and often controversial, he often clashed with the Mugabe administration and was thrown out of the government, welcomed back in, then thrown out again. He died in 1995 and was buried in Zimbabwe's National Cemetery. He was declared a national hero. Jinge Mutambuka, future Minister of Education Josiah Tungamurai, future Air Force Chief, after retirement as MP for Gutu North. Edson Zavago, lawyer, Harvard graduate, future government minister, clashed with Mugabe around press freedom, buried a national hero. Dr. Simbi Mubako Professor Walter Kamba, later Vice-Chancellor of the University of Zimbabwe Joseph M. Sika, ZAPU leader, detained with Nkomo, future Vice President T. George Silundika, ZAPU Publicity and Information Secretary A. M. Chambati, future Minister of Finance and died from cancer within six months of accepting the post after David J. M. Vincent declined the post. John Nkomo, future Vice President L. Barron S. K. Sabanda E. Malambo C. N. Lovu E. Siziba K. N. Doro Zimbabwe Rhodesia delegation Prime Minister Bishop Abel Muzoriwa S. C. Mundawarara E. L. Buell F. Zindoga D. C. Mukom G. B. Nyandoro Rev. N. Dabanin G. Sithol L. Nyamba Chief Keiza and Diweni Z. M. Bafana I. D. Smith D. C. Smith R. Kranye C. Anderson Dr. J. Kamuzakiri G. Pincus L. G. Smith Air Vice Marshal Harold Hawkins Dr. E. M. F. Chitate David Zamchia Simpson Mutambanangwe M. A. Adam P. Claypole Gordon Chavanduka 
Later developments In 1980 the first phase of land reform, partly funded by the United Kingdom, resettled around 70,000 landless people on more than 20,000 square kilometres of land in the New Zimbabwe. In 1981 the British assisted in setting up a Zimbabwe Conference on Reconstruction and Development, at which more than £630 million of international aid was pledged. In 1997 war veterans began receiving individual personal payments of ZW $50,000 each for their service in the war, costing the nation's taxpayers billions of dollars and depleting government coffers. Then some months later Robert Mugabe announced the forced acquisition of land under Section 8 would proceed, and within 24 hours the local currency had devalued more than 50% and thus began the hyperinflation and demonetization of Zimbabwean currency and the flights of whites from the country, most never to return. In the time since independence, the Lancaster House Agreement was modified and changed more than 27 times according to a Zimbabwe independent newspaper. See also Land reform in Zimbabwe References Topic. Further reading Preston, Matthew. "'Stalemate and the Termination of Civil War, Rhodesia Reassessed". Journal of Peace Research 41 No. 1 65–83. Soames, Lord. "'From Rhodesia to Zimbabwe". International Affairs 56 No. 3 405–419. Online External links Read the full agreement on UN Peacemaker Database